You're quite the entrepreneur. Were you the reason why Love and Hip Hop Hollywood came together? Correct. I'll take that. <laughs> even when, <laughs> even when it's not wanting to, um, people not wanting to give me credit for it, but. Definitely. Uh, myself and Tierra Marie were sitting on a balcony. I woke up one day. She's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm putting together a cast for Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Like, they need to bring it to Hollywood. I hear they're going to go to Miami or Louisiana or somewhere else. And forget that. Everybody lives in Hollywood. We're the place where everybody wants to be at. The music industry's popping out here. So I'm going to put this cast together and I'm going to get it to Mona or VH1 or whoever. And we're going to bring this show here. And that's what I did. <laughs> How easy was it getting everyone together? It wasn't hard at all because the show was already, it already existed. It was already a huge hit in New York and Atlanta. So being who I was in the industry and having the credibility I did when I hit Youngberg and Masika Kalasia or Sincere, Tierra Marie, when I am um, at, when Miles and Milan contacted me, um, when Ray heard about it, it was very easy saying this is the show that already exists. So I can't take credit for Love and Hip Hop existing and I would never disrespect Mona and do that. But if we get a list of people together and kind of get this all formatted, maybe they'll just bring it here because we already did the legwork. And so, you know, that's me all day. I, lo I love to do the legwork and make something happen. And literally, I think I had started it in September of 2013 and we were already shooting episode one in February of 2014. So it didn't take that long. So did you want the same credit as Yandy Smith on Love and Hip Hop New York? I didn't even know that she got credit, but if she did get credit, then kudos to her. And yeah, I want some credit because it's not just in helping cast or formulate it. It's also picking locations. It's bringing in new people. It's shedding light on Hollywood because nobody from that production was out here like that. They were in New York and Atlanta, so they used people like Sincere or uh, Miss Diddy, myself, to get locations, to get things for the city to make the show happen. Like, they didn't have the pulse on Hollywood, we did. So we had to let them know what was popping in the streets, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like some credit should be due. and. You know, I've been told that until I go make another show and create it, then that's when I'll get my credit. So I guess that's what I have to do. Do you think you're portrayed accurately on the show? Of course not. I mean, I think that I fit a character that was needed. Um, season one, I was my honest, real, truthful self. The thing is, I can't say that the show is edited. I mean, scripted, but it's edited. You know what I'm saying? So. Just because what you see might not have been everything that was shot. You know, in season one, I had at least 13 deleted scenes, probably five, six of them with Youngberg, where the roles were reversed. But for the story that needed to be told, you know, they had to do with way with things that didn't fit the storyline that need, needed the, they went, that they wanted the world to see. So I can't say that I was not accurately portrayed because I, I do wear my heart on my seat, sleeve. When I love, I love hard. And when I feel betrayed, you know, I'm emotional about it. So with all of that, if that's what the world knows of me, then that part's true. What's your relationship with Tierra Marie and Youngberg now? You ended the last season having a cordial relationship with your old roommate. Have you ever spoken to Youngberg or even tried to squash it? Um, fun size, I uh, would never want to ever have any kind of communication communication with again there's no need like he was fraud and he was fake and he led the world to believe one thing that was not true and we see what his fate ended up like I don't think we really see or hear of him at all maybe on a uh, my track or something he might have produced because of my plug with Jay but other than that he really doesn't exist and I'm giving him too much shine right now and as far as Tierra Marie goes I feel like that's always my sister. I'm always gonna love her like a baby sister. Um, I think the TV world did separate us from probably growing to where we could be now, but people in your life for um, a season and a reason sometime, and she continues to do her path, and I wish her nothing but success, love, happiness, everything that I believe Tierra Marie could be from the time we became friends in 2006. I still want her to be all of that. There's no ill will. 
and we do reach out when I just went through a little bit of trouble she was one of the first people to call to make sure I'm good vice versa we help each other out and even though we might not be you know rolling you know rolling with the homies every day is still a genuine love and friendship that will always be there no matter what you see on or off TV what made you decide to leave Love and Hip Hop Hollywood well last season um, you know, I guess in the efforts of being honest, because it's something that I've never admi admitted to, I was pregnant, and um, it got tricky for me at the end of the season with being pregnant. I ended up having a miscarriage. I know that was a big thing online. They couldn't, didn't know if I was or wasn't. When I got asked at that time, I was not pregnant anymore, so I never lied about it. But um, they kept putting me into hot situations, and in that state that I was in, I didn't want the confrontation, so I decided to leave. Um, after things cooled down and I had that time off, because we get a couple months off before we start filming again, I was contemplating going back, but due to the relationship that I was in, um, the, the person that I was in it with uh, felt like, not I won't say it was beneath me to go back, but like, you're already on a new level. You're already coming out on stages and opening up arena shows and on a world tour like, you know, once J. Cole said the line about uh, all there's left is reality hoes and whatever J. Cole did his little last diss song, he was like, it was over for you in reality TV. But I don't think that reality TV's out the picture for me, just maybe not that show on that platform because it doesn't shed the best light on me or my real life or situations all the time. Now, at the time, you were dating Kat. Was it Kat's child? That's the only person I date. I think that's the only person I dated since I um, got off Love and Hip Hop, and that's the only person that I have dated since recently. So, how did you guys get through it together? It was actually very hard because we had to separate. He handled it a little bit different than I did, and uh, he was a little bit more disappointed, and I kind of needed a friend. But we ended up still trying to. Um, put it back together and, you know, things are where it's at now. It's, it's, it's even worse. So, you know, it is what it is. This is really my first time really talking with me and basically he told me like, you know, he didn't appreciate the letter that I dropped and it made him seem like it was, he was a liar or whatnot. And, and they fucking stole off on me in the Nike store. That's so not accurate. Like, and that's, that's beyond not accurate. It's so accurate. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's, it's completely like, true. Nas, all, all you Nas fans could sit there and hate me and talk a bunch of shit, which they did when I went on Twitter. 